The latest Stationers update added probably, in my opinion, one of the most powerful functions that they've added since implementing MIPS. And that is the ability to address any device using um, hash space, a hash or whatever. I'm controlling all 50 of these lights using that much code. There is nothing on these um, on these screws here, on these address screws. I am not using the stack in any way. I am just using the, uh, the namespace. Let me give myself a battery here. Now, how is this done? Well, first, I'm going to have to explain uh, a few things in the game before we can continue. I'm going to have to explain some concept of, concepts of uh, computers and hashing and stuff like that. So it's going to get a little boring. First, let's walk up to, to one of these devices here, these lights, uh, and we can see that there is a prefab hash. That's not the hash we want, so uh, why they didn't add it to that, I don't know. So give me a second. Okay, so I thought there was a way to read it um, in game, but there isn't a way to read it in game. So we'll just forget about that right now. Um, let's just uh, look at how this all of this stuff works. So we're going to look at this uh, device right here. I'm going to call up its name. That's the name that I gave it. Let's copy that name. And then we will go into um, Windows. So just give me a sec. Okay, now that we're in Google, we're going to type hash generator, and we're going to choose this one just because I, I like that uh, that website a little bit more. And now we've got a hash generator. We're going to stick that value that we just came up with in here, and we're going to calculate it. And we will get a bunch of values. Um, what a hash is, is it's basically a mathematical formula to come up with this code, okay? So this name will always come up with these codes in these hash algorithms. If I go over here and I grab another hash here, this is uh, MD5. And I put MD5 in there. Um, we will see that this is the, the MD5 hash that ends in 88. If we go in here, we look up. MD5, it ends in 88. Okay, so now we have this hex code. We'll grab this hex code and then we'll load another website. Hex to integer to convert it to an integer. And we'll put hex to decimal. Stick that in there. We'll convert. And now we get two numbers. We get the decimal number and then we get a signed decimal number. So it's this is the signed decimal. Decimal. What the difference between a, um, a decimal and a, and a signed decimal that is an integer is that um, those decimals can be negative numbers. That integer can be a negative number. So half half of the binary is positive and half of the binary set is is negative. That's why sometimes when you're playing with um, with values, when you're cheating values with cheat generator, sometimes you will suddenly get a negative number. That's because the uh, negative numbers are below the positive numbers. Are they first or are they above? I can't remember, but they're there. Now, once we put that, uh, once we put a name into, this is a different light, but once we put that known name into that light, we now have a known hash on that light. Now, we can't see the hash because um, I don't know why the uh, rocket isn't, is like, has no foresight whatsoever. But now we, now we know what that number is. What the difficult part is, is coming up with a sequential uh, a sequence. That's sort of saying the same thing twice, to come up with a, a series of numbers that are in sequence. And if you've been paying attention to the lights and to the clicks, you might notice that sometimes it skips a light. Like right there, it just skipped a light. Now that is the problem with how I derive this and why this is implemented in the worst way possible. Let's look at code. I'm sure everybody that's got uh, some programming knowledge has already figured out what I've done. Uh, this is the first hash 
the uh, integer value of the hash uh, that corresponds with that light up there. And this is the last integer hash that corresponds with uh, this light. Which way does this go? This light down here. Okay. And all I'm doing is adding a number to this. So this bank could be any size I want. It could be thousands of lights if I want. And it would all be addressed with this minimal amount of code here. This is not even very optimized. I could put this code, um, I can I can put infinite number of lights on this code, uh, infinite number of um, filters of anything, anything that you want to address and that you want to run through them sequ sequentially, um, you can grab it. There is a problem, however, with this. To get these values, you need to make a rainbow table because hashes can't be unhashed. If I take this number and I hash it into this number, I cannot then take this number, this hash, and reverse it. To do that, to reverse it, you need to generate all of these uh, these data sets here. These, um, you need to generate this data set, which means generating all of this. And if I stop this from printing, we can see what this is. We have the device names that I, I plug into a um, CRC32 uh, hashing algorithm, and I print those out sequentially, and then they give me the value. This is, I've translated the hash to the signed integer, and I get a random number back, a lot of random numbers back. So, we don't have any sequential data here. But now we do have what is called a rainbow table. Uh, a rainbow table is basically what it sounds like. This is the first bow of the rainbow, the first um, the first stripe of the rainbow, second stripe, third stripe, fourth stripe, fifth stripe. And we just go all the way through them, constantly generating these stripes to get all of this data. Then we can sort that data using the um, the, the hash integer now. So now we have some sequential uh, uh, data here. The problem is, is that information is random. So right here, we can see that we've generated um, three different values, uh, or we've, we've taken, we have three different values that result in the same uh, hash integer. Now this is called, um, sometimes called collision data, there's another name for it. I, I, I can't remember what the name for it is, but uh, hash collision is is uh, is one of the names for it. There's another name, like uh, re something redundancy. I can't remember what it is. So <laughs> you can have any one of these names for this, uh, this um, particular hash. So I've had to generate a lot of these values. In fact, I've had to generate that many hashes just to get enough data where I'm only missing a few numbers here and there. So we can see here one, two, three, four, five, six, no seven. We have an eight, nine, ten, no eleven, no twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, no twenty, twenty-one, and so on and so forth. Literally a billion times. I'm I'm still sorting through uh, the data sets. Uh, some of the there's some corruption here and there, and the data set isn't being spit spit out properly. But each one of these is 231 megabytes big, just to get this data. Now I'm still sorting through this data. I'll I don't know when I I'm going to have it finished, but I am going to post it when I'm done. Um, it's going to have holes in it. I'm going to try to post at least uh, a few of them um, in the description or something. I'm going to grab at least, you know, 10, 20, 30 uh, sequential um, hashes here so that you can get started on the program right away and you don't have to generate these tables yourself because they are a literal pain in the ass. So I had to generate literally 10 billion um, hashes and it took it didn't take very long to generate the hashes the hashes took I think about two hours three hours something like that 
that was very quick to split them all out. Uh, but then to sort them so that they're all sequential, uh, that took 24 hours. It took it, and it's still going. So I don't know how long it's going to take. It's probably going to take two or three days at least because you're dealing with a lot of hashes. And then I'm going to have to generate even more hashes to fill in my, um, my rainbow table. I may never fill out the rainbow table. There, it's a, um, a not insignificant statistical probability that I could generate hashes forever and not come up with a hash uh, for a specific, a specific value here. So like uh, if we go back up here, uh, we may never get one zero seven zero 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 eleven or twelve. It may literally take a million years to get that. Probably not, but um, because it is random, it may take that long. And I may get, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100, or near infinite um, combinations for this hash here. So there really isn't a lot to say uh, about this update or um, about this programmically. Um, it's very straightforward. There, are, it's it's basically it is it's not basically it is sequential addressing, um, sort of hacked in the hacked into the system into this game uh, that you'd be able to use it. It didn't need to be this way. Um, Rocket Works could have easily put away in that you could um, assign a specific address or something of that nature that you, instead of putting a name in, you could give it a Mac address, a quote unquote Mac address. That's what a lot of um, network hardware uses is Mac addresses. So why they did it this way, I don't know. Why they gave us uh, access to uh, device hashes in this way, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking, but uh, the rainbow table will be available at some point for you to use. Make something cool. See you later. And if you haven't already figured, I fucking hate this implementation. This is why I barely play this game now.